Good afternoon, everyone. This is Pastor Kenny Lee coming to you with today's daily devotional. I'm in a new place today. I'll show you a little bit of it um, as we hear the music from today's video. Before we open our time of prayer, I just want to say to those of you who have kids that are associated with our children's programming or our youth programming, we would love for you to come and provide a meal for them at some point. We're not asking for a long-term commitment. If you could just make a commitment to provide um, one meal on one Wednesday for one group. We're doing the children at one time from four until five and the, and the adults, I'm sorry, the youth, the youth from five until 6.30. So there's ample opportunity for everyone to serve. They had a great time last night. Our, Age demographic in our children's program changed significantly. We had a pretty good handful of littles yesterday, so we were excited about that opportunity to be in ministry to that group of, of children and parents. And before we uh, read today's scripture, I want to invite you into a moment of prayer with me. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this day that you have given us. We thank you because we know that you are here with us that your spirit lives in us. And Lord, we ask that through that same spirit that you would open our hearts and minds to that which you would say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture passage comes to us from Joshua 5, and I'm going to begin reading with verse 10. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on that day, and they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Once when Joshua was by Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing before him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went to him and said, Are you one of us or one of our adversaries? He replied, Neither, but as commander of the army of the Lord I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped, and he said to him, What do you command your servant, my Lord? The commander of the army of the Lord said to Joshua, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So this is two vignettes in one reading. Actually, the first three verses were today's lectionary reading, but I saw the, the last several and had to include them today. And so Israel has gone through the wilderness. They have crossed the Jordan on dry ground, God having stopped the waters of the flooded Jordan and allow them to pass through on dry ground, much as their ancestors had passed through when they left the land of Egypt, having been slaves. And as they wandered in the wilderness, not one of the people who left Egypt, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, are left. Joshua and Caleb, if you'll recall, are the two spies that were sent out to spy out the land when God initially told Israel to go in and take position, possession of the land. But the people of Israel, having been slaves all their lives and never been trained in the art of war, were afraid to engage their enemies. Even though God promised that God would be with them, they were afraid. And because of that, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years while God provided for them. And while that generation of people who had known slavery had died out. If you'll recall, when Israel left... Egypt. There was a time in the encampment when Moses went through and all of the males had the mark of circumcision marked out on the flesh of their bodies. They were people of the covenant having received that mark of circumcision, the mark of God having chosen them and chosen to deliver them. Just before the reading that we shared today, right after um, Israel has crossed the Jordan, 
right before the Passover is celebrated, all of the males of the encampment are circumcised because none of them had had the right of circumcision during the time of of Israel's wandering in the wilderness and so now the entire body has been circumcised. I believe that this was in preparation for celebrating the Passover because that is one of the that is one of the um, laws governing that particular festival celebration that everyone who participates in that must have the mark of circumcision on their bodies. And so once they had celebrated Passover, the very next day they began to eat of the crops that they were that they were finding there in Canaan as they made this incursion into enemy territory. There were crops in the land. Remember yesterday in the seventh chapter of Joshua we read that the people of pardon me, the people of Jericho are locked inside the gates, locked inside the walls. Nobody's going in, nobody's coming out because they're afraid. The first part of this chapter also says that all of the kings in this area were afraid of Israel. They lived in fear that their territory was going to be the next to be invaded and they were going to be overrun and, and put to the sword as many of the people who inhabited the promised land were. And so we see our friend Joshua, a new leader who is, um, he's communed with God. He's been obedient in, in leading these people of Israel. And we, we, we heard in another one of the readings from this week how people reverenced Joshua and respected his leadership and his right to lead in the same way that they respected Moses before him. And God had begun to... Um, enhance Joshua's status as a leader and give him the gifts that he needed and Moses had taken him as his protege and taken him under his wing and taught him and counseled him and Joshua was in the leadership body being prepared for this major role of leadership in the life of his ethnic community and so Joshua is outside of the camp and he's near Jericho this is before they have um, gone up against Jericho and so Joshua encounters a man as he is in that area and as he comes up to the man he sees the man has a drawn sword. Now apparently Joshua is not afraid or perhaps Joshua has a sword on himself and he's not afraid of this man and he comes up and he inquires as to whether he is one of the Israelites. Is he, is, are you someone for me? Are you one of our adversaries and the the man replies neither he said I'm the commander of the armies of the Lord the text tells us that Joshua falls on his face and worship and ask what the man would tell him and the man tells him to take off his sandals because he's on holy ground now to me this is a clear indication of an appearance of the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ because an angel, a, a regular angel, even if it's an archangel, will never allow themselves to be the object of worship. And rarely, if ever, have I heard an angel say, take off your shoes because you're on holy ground. And so I believe this was, in fact, God incarnate, having given Joshua what an amazing experience, first off, Joshua has obeyed the Lord's command and he's been, he's not being afraid, he's being very courageous. He walks right up to the man and he, he basically asks who he is and what his business is. But when he realizes that he is in the presence of the deity, when he understands that this is the Lord, that he bows down on his face in the dust in obeisance and worships and then is obedient to God's command to remove his shoes. We hear no more of the encounter. I can't imagine that this was all that transpired. And it leaves me wondering, um, like Paul Harvey, I'd like to hear the rest of the story. I don't recall this being recorded in any other part of the Bible. What an interesting little vignette in Scripture. 
but I believe that this was this was a sign from God. This was a sign of God's presence, of God's purpose, to let the leader of God's people know that that God was was in the battle with them, that the army, the commander of the armies of the Lord was there. He was present that the armies of the Lord would be there when the time was right and they would protect Israel, they would fight with Israel, they would help them to take possession of the promised land. Now while these people who had wandered the wilderness, they've grown up hearing how God has given God's law at Sinai, hearing about water from the rock, knowing nothing but the miracles of God in the terms of manna and the quail in the camp every every day and yet the farther they get away from Sinai the the less connected perhaps they feel and so God is making God's self known once again in in various ways in order that Israel will know that God is still on the throne that he's still in control that he is still directing the destiny of this group of people and God is still with us we are not alone God is even though We've gone through a contentious election season, even though the results of the election are still up in the air and we're, we're anxious to know what the results are, God is still on the throne. Regardless of which candidate is elected, God is still on the throne. Accepting all the circumstances that any of us face in this life, our joy, our life comes to us through our, through our status as children of God. I want to share a beautiful piece of music with you. This is a virtual choir and orchestra. It's comprised of people from 15 countries. It's a beautiful piece of music. The name of the hymn is You'll Never Walk Alone. I'll include the link in the description to this video when I post this daily devotional later. Let's enjoy this time together.
What a beautiful message. We'll never walk alone. I hope that you take comfort in the words of scriptures that we've shared, in the thoughts that have been shared, in this piece of music that we've enjoyed, in the beautiful fall day that I've shown you only just a part of. I hope that today's been a good day for you, will be a good day for you. I hope that you find time to be alone with God, to read your Bible, to pray. And in that in that vein, let us close our time together in prayer. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this day that you have given us. We thank you because this has been a week where crops have continued to come out of the field as farmers gather up the remainder of this year's harvest. We thank you for the bounty of the earth. We thank you for the beauty of your created order. We ask, O oh God, that we, you would be with us today, that you would make your presence very known to us in small and large ways that we would experience what it means to follow Jesus. And we ask you today, God, to continue to lead us in the way that leads to life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day. I want to remind you to like, share, subscribe, and continue to follow Jesus. See you tomorrow.